Welcome to Families for Life, a podcast of Oak Hill Baptist Church. On today's episode, it's the return of Brian Van Doren. Welcome back, Brian. Hey, Brian. It's good to say yeah, that. It's good, it's good to, to say, Brian. Welcome, Brian. It's good. <laughs> it's good to say that. Yeah, it's good to it's good to see you. It's good to be here on this episode with you. And uh, yeah, I've yeah. Missed it. For those that don't know, if you've just started listening recently, Brian Van Doren and I co-hosted this podcast for a couple years, and That's then right. he left. He decided that he wanted to follow God over Sting with me so that was unfortunate no <laughs> we're really proud of brian and what god is doing in his life but he's gone to texas and so the podcast has kind of uh, changed a little bit but i wanted to have him back on because he was such a, a big part of this and i wanted listeners that have been with us from the beginning to hear from him i'm getting to see you we're talking over yes uh <clears throat> over internet right now with uh, video yeah. chatting and then you listeners will get to hear him. So, yeah, we are literally a thousand miles away from each other, and we're able to that's crazy have this very like pretty natural conversation. I've been I've been actually pretty impressed with it. Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah, I'm just thankful to be back on. I do. I miss the podcast. I miss uh, being able to talk about uh, really important things uh, with you and having that resource. But I'm glad. I'm so glad that you're still doing it, and uh, I love. Uh, hearing Pastor Allen be on there Mm -hmm. and you guys talking about marriage. And so I'm hoping that people are still plugging in and, uh, and finding some value uh, in what, in what you guys are continuing to do. And, and so, but I'm glad to be here uh, with you today. So, so how, how is Texas? I, uh, I did live in Texas when I was a kid and actually I lived very near to where you, um, to where you're at right now. I lived in Lake Jackson, which is just not too far from you. Well, and, I live in Lake Jackson. Okay, we'll see. So yeah, that's where I lived as a kid. Yeah. So what I remember, yeah. what I remember about Texas is hot and snakes. Is that is that pretty much uh, sum up Texas? Uh, so I, it is hot. Um, you know, we we did have one day of uh, freeze, and it really you know messed a lot of people up because we're not used to that down here. Um, yeah, you can get and, rid of all your winter uh, gear when you go to Texas. You can just <laughs> store it away. You don't even need it. Yeah, that's right. I really kind of did. Um, and then uh, let's see the snakes part, you know, so I've heard stories about snakes being in one of the offices here at the church at one point in time, but uh, I haven't experienced that yet. So <laughs> don't worry. you will. So it's going to be, yeah, I, I'm sure what, it, what is, what is here all the time are uh, mosquitoes, yes. uh, oh. mosquitoes, mosquito hawks. I mean, just tons of bugs and uh, people, I mean, a regular conversation is, you know, what kind of pesticide you're using or, you know, what company you've got. <laughs> well, they used to, so. um, in our, I don't know if it was our, our neighborhood or what, but they would drive a big old truck yes. through our neighborhood with like these fog machines, you know, and, mm-hmm. and you're supposed to like go inside or whatever. But as a kid, you're like running behind the fog machine. You're like, Hey, it's a fog machine. Like that makes a lot of I sense. I know. Brian. Maybe that's why <laughs> I messed no. up. No, <laughs> no, that's true. They still do that. And, um, because it's such a bad problem. And uh, there's a there's a town here uh, that literally has a mosquito festival. Oh my um, gosh! That I, I haven't been. They haven't had it yet uh, since I've been here. So I'll I'll go check that out. I'll let you know what that's all about. Yeah, but, the mosquito uh, festival. Yeah, I do remember. We did yeah. a mission trip down. Uh, you went with us to. Yes. Um, we were down in Galveston. I think I went down. I've been down there a couple times now, and I do remember like how bad the mosquitoes yes. were, and it was just. They, I mean, they're like they're they're like an inch or two. They're huge. They're huge. <laughs> they are gigantic. Yeah, and there are many of them. It's not like and, the little uh, wimpy mosquitoes we have in Indiana. No. You know, these guys are huge. Yeah. Like, so you spray I, uh, them with off, and they just look at you, and they're just like, "Leave me alone." <laughs> what? 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 Yeah. Is that all Bring you got? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, no, other than that, man, it's it's been really good. The weather is the weather is actually really pleasant right now. The summers are super hot mm-hmm. and they're long. But like right now, the springtime, you know, January and on, it's been it's been really pleasant mm-hmm. weather. Um, and the people, especially at my church at Second Baptist, um, the people here are amazing. You know, yeah. Talk about the church a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, they're just uh, wonderful people. They 
um, they do. They love each other. You know, one of the, the motto here at Second Baptist is uh, your second family, which I, I love, you know, that that idea, you know, same sort of deal at Oak Hills, this this family mm -hmm. idea of the family of God, really. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, doing life together is a big, big part of what they uh, believe in. Um, and so they live that out. They really mean that. And, uh, and I'm thankful to be a part of that, to be able to lead that now and to help help grow it more and to invite more people into that community. Because um, <clears throat> Angleton, where our church is in um, southern Texas, is growing. Houston is huge yeah. and it's getting even bigger mm -hmm. and Houston is kind of expanding south um and between Houston and the uh, Gulf of uh New Mex of Mexico there th there's Dow it has a huge um plant and port and there's like a bunch of employees there and those two entities Houston and Dow's corporation all those are kind of growing together and Angleton right. is right mm -hmm. in the middle yeah and so we've got a lot of people coming to our area a lot of lost people a lot of yeah. people from all over the world um and so stuff I had no idea that was the case but what's really cool is Second Baptist Church all the leadership here they've been paying attention to that and they hired me specifically with that idea in mind of mm -hmm. like, Hey, people are coming here and we want to be ready for them. Yeah. That's awesome. And, um, yeah. Houston, yeah I'm, I'm Houston's one of that. the biggest uh, growing uh, metropolis areas in the country. Yes. It's, there's, it's definitely, they say it's going to be, if it's not already, they say it's going to be the third largest city in America. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. I, I had no idea. If so. people want to stay connected, I see is your website, uh, your second family.org. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That's a good, yeah. I'm glad you said that. That is the best way to see what's going on is your second family.org. And then from there um, you can click and get to your, um, your YouTube page, which I think have your sermons videos on yep. there as well. So yeah. So people, if you want to hear Brian teach, go to your second family.org. I'll put that in the show notes and then you can yep. hear his teaching yeah, or so. find us on uh, Facebook too. Um, second Baptist church at Angleton. What are you teaching Facebook. through right now? Yeah, right now I'm in First Thessalonians, and uh, I did a series. Uh, uh, oh yeah, here, here, here we go. What was my first series? Uh, I did an Advent series. Uh oh, oh, you did. Then, okay. Yeah, I did an Advent series because I came in Christmas, and then I did a series. Uh, here, I'll help you. You on... did faithfulness to our relationships. Yes, thank you. That was what it was. Faithfulness. I just looked I it up on your about... YouTube page. <laughs> what you're on? Looked... Yeah, you're yeah. seeing what I did. Yeah. That's good because I'm like. What did I do? <laughs> you know, that seems oh. to be a common thing because, uh, you know, I'll talk to Pastor Allen, you know, after a couple yeah. of weeks of his sermon, he's like, I don't remember what I preached. You know, you teach so I much, know. you just, you just, you just go yes. on to the next thing well, and you kind of forget. And that's what it is. You're thinking about the next one right. uh, so much. And uh, so I'm in First Thessalonians right now. And that's been really good. Our series is called Excel Still More. It's mm -hmm. the idea of keep going because, you know, I think Second Baptist Church is a really healthy church. But I, uh, I believe that, you know, uh, anyone, any healthy believer, any healthy church is always looking for yeah. how to become more like Jesus because mm. we're definitely not perfect. That's good. And so that's mm. that's the idea. That's real good. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I think on this episode, we wanted to kind of talk about, you know, you and I have been staying in touch. We uh, yeah. <clears throat> we text regularly. We talk on the phone every, you know, couple of weeks, which is a uh, month or so, which is um, pretty good for guys. You know, I mean, yes, and there's, you know. <laughs> talking about once a month is, uh, is pretty good. So that's, that is really <laughs> impressive actually. Yeah. I talked to, I asked your dad the other day, cause your dad still works at our church as a, as our handyman. And, uh, I was like, you talked to Brian. He goes, Oh, well I talked to Kayla and I'm like, he talks to <laughs> Kayla more than he talks to you. That's right. Yes. That's about accurate. Like, that yeah. sounds pretty much like two guys. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But anyway, I wanted to kind of just kind of talk through, you know, one of the things I haven't been able to do on the podcast recently, cause we've been in this series is kind of just talk about just things that are on my heart or things that are on my life that maybe God has been teaching. Yeah. And so I wanted to ask you, you know, what has God been teaching you? What has he been showing you? You've gone through, gosh, just some of the biggest transition that a person can have, not only a new job, but I mean, a new church, I mean, new, new adventures. And so maybe God is yeah. showing you some, some new things or, or re- you know, reteaching you things that you need to learn yes. again, you know? So I don't know what, what are you, what's been going on? 
Yeah, man. No, I appreciate you. You know, I, I again, I'm thankful to be here and to be able to talk about these things. <clears throat> It's funny, I was talking to an, a Dow employee, a guy who said that Dow, one of the things they do, they don't they do not do the big three. They, they might do two, but they won't do three. They won't move you, mm-hmm. change your role, and give you new technology all at the same time. Oh, wow. And, um, and he was like, but you did all of those things, didn't you? And I was like, you know, I did. Yeah, I moved. <laughs> Uh, changed roles and, and I'm having to, to deal with new systems and, and infrastructures and um, but you know the Lord is faithful and uh, that's part of the reason why I preached on that sermon yeah. yeah so I'll be straight up honest and you know people at my church know this that uh, you know it is it's scary to jump out in faith um, mm. obeying the Lord, you know, yeah. knowing this is what he wants, but you still have to trust him and do it. You know, it's really scary to do that and, and do something that's completely outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. Well, it's I saw that to do something. Yeah. Well, I saw that in you, you know, when you were praying about, uh, you know, what God, the direction you, you were, you were kind of like, okay, God, what do you want me to do? There was a little uncertainty in there, but once you had confirmed, God said, Hey, I want you to do this. Yeah. You were, uh, you were steadfast in your desire and commitment, you didn't waffle, at least not that I saw. And, uh, you know, you were confident that, okay, God has called me to do this. I got to walk forward. It's scary. Uh, but, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to walk into what God has for me. That's it, man. And and it really comes down to knowing that and, and holding on to that. And I'll, I'll explain some of that as we keep going through this, but, but it is scary Mm -hmm. and it's uncomfortable and it's not like easy. It's not easy. And, um, you know, I've talked to some people back, back, uh, in Evansville and elsewhere that seem like, you know, it seems like everything's going great. And it's like, things are going great. Mm -hmm. Like I have zero complaints, but it's still not easy. It's still hard and uncomfortable. And, um, something that has helped me a lot, you know, this idea of like, what, man, everything is different in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the first thing that I want to just talk about that I've learned is, is when everything is completely different in your life mm. and even with your kids, like my kids are literally changing day by day. So like, there's almost no constant <clears throat> for me. What is my constant? And one of the things that we do with our kids is we like to listen to a lot of songs together. And there's this um, thing on YouTube called Bible adventures. Mm-hmm. And we watch those Bible adventures on Sunday morning. The kids do. And there's a song that they sing and the chorus says, when God takes me somewhere new, he has good things for me to do. Mm. It's super catchy. And I just remember hearing my, my, my four-year-old son singing that, you know, Mm. he's just in the living room. When God takes me somewhere new, he has good things for me to do. Mm. And I just started like, I, I heard it again. And I just started like tearing up, realizing like, that's my constant, Mm. you know? Um, I, I know what God wants me to do and everything else can be different. Everything else can be new, but I always know that he has good things for me to do. And it's always the same sorts of things. You know, I'm, I'm not really doing different things. I'm doing them in different ways, Yeah. but they're all very, I mean, they're the same things. And I, it just made me think of, you know, again, like Proverbs 16, three through four, commit your works to the Lord and your plans will be established. Mm. The Lord has made everything for its own purpose. Even the wicked, wicked for the day of evil. Like I know that if I just continue to do the good things that God has prepared beforehand Mm. for me to do, um, everything's going to be okay. That's my constant. And that's a, that's an old, that's a, that's a totally normal, um, uh, thing that's something we all know, right? But man, mm-hmm. uh, when you got to do it, it's like it feel it's palpable, right? So, so yeah, that's good, man. But, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, I, I, I think that that's a good truth for us to remember because you know, in life, there will there's rarely a season where there's a, a constant in everything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even if you live in the same place, the same town you've always lived in even if you have the same job, there are things that are, are changing all around you, yes. people and uh, <clears throat> friendships and churches. And I mean, things, things don't ever are not static, you know? Right. And as much as we want it, things to be like a routine or be normal, that's, that's just not going to happen. 
there's always something, a tragedy or something that's going to happen. And so having yeah, the Lord true. as your constant is, is it, that's it right there. The, you know, while yeah. everything around us changes, the Lord is unchanging yeah. and that's always been a comfort to me. That's, that is it, man. And that's, you got, but you got to hold on to it. Yeah. Um, you got to hold on to him. So, yeah. So yeah. How about you, man? What, what are some things the Lord's to, cause to your point, <clears throat> Things are changing for you all the sure. time, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So, like, what are some things that the Lord's been The more you? things change, the more they stay the same. No, I'm just <laughs> oh, man. Oh, what's the thing? Uh, oh, what's the thing you don't like what people say? <laughs> living the dream. Oh, living the dream. I'm living the dream, Brian. <laughs> living the dream. Hey, I've got a shout out for Lucy. Or, no, I'm sorry. Well, there, Lucy, uh, I hope she's doing well. She, she, she was a, uh, one of the last people I baptized at the church. Um, but her sister, uh, Sadie, roasted me in a letter, a goodbye letter. She roasted me with those uh, pet peeves. Really? She was like, I hope you live the dream, <laughs> bud. <laughs> I was like, wow, that was savage, Sadie. That was savage. That's awesome. So, Sadie, they definitely, got we definitely miss you. Uh, the youth, the youth definitely miss you. They keep saying, uh, that, you know, well, this is, this is what Brian did. This is the way we, I know. you know, and, uh, <laughs> well, they, Brian's not here. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, Brian's not here anymore. Uh, they want to play that stupid game. Um, what's that game where you run around the church and you be crazy and, uh, Oh yeah. Um, uh, uh, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm going to get the rules for gotcha. And I'm going to send it down to your youth in Angleton so that you can experience the pure pain and torture of what that game is. So <laughs> I never as I a, start that. as a senior pastor. <clears throat> yeah. Now right. that you're in charge, <laughs> uh, but no, uh, we told him that gotcha is off is uh, off the table right now. Maybe the next That's youth right. pastor. Yeah, yeah. Wait till there's a youth pastor. To right. <laughs> exactly. But you know, one of the things God has been teaching me is just you know uh, it, it all is kind of connected. But I'll just kind of pick out a few different pieces. Um, you know, dealing with sin seriously and not and not tolerating it. You know, even there can be like little sins in our lives that we kind of, uh, I, I use this illustration. I spoke to the youth and I use it as like pet sins. You know what I'm saying? Like we keep a little pet around and we think it's just this little dog, like a little Yorkie or something that's on a leash. And we we're like, it's not really hurting anybody. It's it, you know, it, it, it just affects me. Uh, but what we don't realize is that that little pet that we think is a little Yorkie is actually a lion and yeah. while we think we have this lion by a leash, it will turn on us like any wild animal at some point in our lives. Satan is just storing up uh, the time when he will, you know, what does the Bible say? Satan is like a lion prowling around to see whom he can devour. And sometimes he sits and waits and he lets you, <clears throat> he tempts you and then he lets you work that sin into your life. And while it seems yeah. harmless, that will just it'll just come and just, just pounce. And so, yeah. uh, you know, conviction hit my life and just not really, uh, tolerating and, and not really tolerating sin, trying to see sin as, as God sees it, you know, as something that is abhorrent to him, uh, really trying to double down and resist in temptation and try to walk in holiness. And obviously I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a person who thinks that we can achieve perfection, I do think that we can walk in holiness and and walk in sanctification in a in a way that if we submit to the Lord and to his spirit that he can work uh holiness into our lives to where we do uh appear more and more like Christ. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So now that go ahead. Well, I was just saying that's good. You know, I've, I've had some conversations recently about like hating our own sin, you know. And um you know, the first step to hating your own sin is, is acknowledging it yeah. and, uh, and saying like, no, that is sin and, um, and being honest about it and being able to be honest with somebody else about it. Right. Um, so that, so that you can then say, Hey, this is dangerous. This yeah. is, you know, I hate this. Yeah. It's like, uh, but you know, the thing is like, we, we look at ourselves and we're like, yeah, I'm not that bad of a person. Like I don't, I don't murder people. I don't, you know, right. I don't, I don't cheat on my wife. But it's like, oh, well, um, you know, I just get I just get angry sometimes, you know, or I just, you know, I just I just gossip occasionally or whatever. Like right. we, tr we excuse these things. And it's like if we had the attitude of what of what the Lord had and if we really understand how much God hates sin and, and what he did to relinquish us of the, the burden of sin, which was 
you know, kill his own son. Yeah. I think we would have a much more serious outlook on sin. And I, I was reading some stuff in the old Testament. We went through in our upward um, devotionals. It was really great. We went through the hall of faith and mm. we went through these great people that God used who, who weren't perfect, but God used in a, in a mighty way. Um, and the interesting thing about it was, as you read the stories of the old Testament, it's God takes sin like really serious. One of the stories yeah. that we used was, uh, the story of, um, the, the serpents, you know, the bronze serpent where, where oh, yeah. the people of God sinned against him and God sent <clears throat> snakes into speaking of snakes, God sent snakes yeah. into the camp and they were biting and killing people. And God was righteous and holy for doing that. I mean, there yeah. was a time where he opened up the ground <clears throat> and swallowed people and God was right for doing so. In fact, yeah. the fact that God, I told the students this also, I said, in f- it, the fact that God doesn't open the ground up right now and swallow us all it is a mercy yeah. to us right now, yes. because that's what we yes. deserve. And if we would see sin as God sees it, we would understand that. And so the fact that God gives us mercy, the fact that he had the bronze serpent, that you look at the bronze serpent and you 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 are saved They're from healed. the snake bite, and how Jesus is very similar for our, our all of our sin in that way. Uh, it's just amazing to me, and and yeah. I think most Christians, we just have such a a flippant view of sin. Why, why do you think that is? That's a good. That's what you just said. A flippant view of sin and of grace, mm-hmm. and how you know it's so costly. And I, I think I think it's you know some of it is um, some of it might be because uh, the effects of sin are not so quickly felt right um especially i mean i don't know if this this might be the case everywhere but like in america there's a lot of sins that that you can mitigate the effects of yeah right Mm -hmm. you can kind of slow them down and so you don't feel it um right away but but you know a lot of what you were saying just made me think of jesus uh the sermon of the mount and that's exactly what he's trying to do is Mm -hmm. say like yes you need to see these sins as grievous sins mm-hmm. like anger and hatred in your heart you are a murderer you know and and that that is the perspective of god mm-hmm. um and i think that the only way to see that especially in a context where it's easy to mitigate the effects of sin right is to um is to be close to god mm-hmm. and to constantly be fixing your eyes on god and hearing him you know, and letting him, you know, work in your life. And some of this is just his sanctification working out according to his timing. Mm. And some of it is our, our, you know, working out our salvation yeah. with fear and trembling. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I'm glad to hear that for you. And I know similar things for me. I, I just, I know like for me, one of the things is like every, um, what, what's the, what, what does the scripture say? It says every, um, word, every like, mm um uh I, I can't remember the exact word of it but it's like every word you say um is taken into account like mm. every single word every every like f- f- uh, fleeting word mm-hmm. that you speak and that to me is like man i need to i need to control my words mm-hmm. i mean just think about how you know like when you're driving and somebody does something like yeah. what are the words that come into your mind mm-hmm. so yeah. you know that's good stuff. Yeah. Well, what about you? What else? Yeah. So, um, some of the things, the way I kind of helped myself think through this was just ask myself questions. And so, you know, this idea, like I was saying, of just being in a new context, doing new things that aren't in my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. I, I asked the question, like, how do I know that God's going to actually see me through this? Like, how do I know that this is what God wants me to do? And that, everything's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how do I hold on to that? And so as I was thinking, I was having a conversation with uh, my, um, one of the associate pastors here, um, Gabe, and we were just talking about things going on the church and just, you know, it's got, you know, God's going to take care of us. Right. And, uh, and he, he said some really encouraging things and it just got me thinking like, you know, I don't want to be like the people who uh, asked Jesus for a sign after he fed the 5,000 people. Right. 
You know, I don't want to be yeah. like Gideon who kept second guessing God and asking for another sign when God's already clear. I mean, he's clearly demonstrated that he's he is with us, um, both both from a general perspective of like just the gospel. Like, I know that he's with me. Just, the gospel, Jesus dying for my sins is enough to know that God is is with me and he and everything's OK. But he keeps all the time. I mean, he's been doing stuff in our church that are just like okay, God, like I was not expecting you to do that sort of mm. thing. Um, and, uh, and I know he's working. And so I don't want to be like the people like in, okay. So John chapter six, right. Uh, they came to him. This is after he fed the 5,000. They, they said to him, what shall we do so that we may work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent, talking about himself. So they said to him, what then do you do for a sign so that we may be see and believe you? What work do you yeah. perform? It's like, so it's are ridiculous. you freaking serious? Yeah. Like, I just fed you 5,000 of you with yeah. like, a, you know, some loaves and fishes, like if you're not going to believe that then you're by the not way believe anything. did you see this on the the chosen yes, oh my gosh i did dude fantastic they did a fantastic job with that episode in the feeding that of the was, 5, I, I loved that third the third season of the chosen yeah oh my goodness man dude i was in so tears good. when uh I, i'm gonna get in tears thinking about it but like the story of peter and uh just like mm. him walking on the water i mean like that like man can you not like it's so human he, yeah. it humanizes these people. And you're like, in your own life, you're like, wow, this yep. is, this is, uh, this is not easy for these guys. These were not no. spiritual giants. They had to trust Jesus through yep. everything. They're normal people just like us. And he's just holding, he's like, don't let me go. Don't let me go. You know, I'm like, oh man, I feel that. I feel that. Um, exactly. And uh side note, you know, one of the other things I thought was awesome about that, that show that season is when the disciples were sent out and they were healing people. I loved how they showed their responses to their, their healings. Like the disciples are healing people of blindness and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they're like, when it happens, the disciples themselves are like, Oh my goodness. Right. I can't believe I just did that. Mm -hmm. And I thought I told Kayla while we were watching, I was like, that's exactly how I feel whenever somebody like gets saved right. or, or people like believe in the truth of God's word and live it out. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe that just happened. Yeah. And um well, one of the things that really good. One of the things that hit me was when they said like we don't even feel like we're prepared to go out. And I'm like that is the that is the the Christian right there. You don't feel you don't ever feel 100% prepared to but you're still called to go on mission for the Lord. Yeah. And he I think that's the element of faith. He provides what you need as you go out as and trust know. him. And that that fits really well with what you're talking about because yeah. What you're saying is, how do we know God is going to see you through it? By trusting in Him, by 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 yeah. continuing to rely and put our faith in Him. This is this is this is what separates a Christian that will persevere in faith and somebody who will not. It's trusting yeah. in the Lord. And if I could say any message to the Christians, I would say what Jesus is driving us to more and more and more is deeper and more real faith. And so, what yeah. we need is not some more knowledge or, I mean, it's good to learn. It's good to grow, but we need our faith to be deepened every yes. day. We need to be able to yeah. trust the Lord more. That's, that's the thing for me, man. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm having to live out what I believe. Yeah. And that's, that's a tangible, real thing. Like I'm growing in my faith, not because I'm learning more stuff. Yeah. It's because I'm having to live out what I already believe and know. Yeah. And I'm having to take these things that are in my mind mm. and in my heart and I'm having to live them out with my hands and my feet. Yeah. And they become even more vibrant in my life. And um and it's hard, but man, it is it is good. Um, but it is hard. And you know, that's that's okay. But I know God will see me through because He's already called me to it. Right. And he's already shown me that He's doing stuff. And so I don't want to sit there and be like, 
oh, can you like show me a sign? That right, you're gonna exactly. Be here, even though you've already shown me like five or six, you know. Um, right. You've already so done all this that. radical work in my life by saving me and the work of <laughs> sanctification. God, can you, this is this is what bugs me about uh, the the story of Gideon <laughs> when people yes. emulate Gideon and they want to say, well, "I got to put a fleece out." Do you, you don't you don't interpret that story correctly because it was wrong for Gideon to put the fleece out because God had clearly told him what he was to do, and he said, "Okay." And even Gideon knew, he's like, Lord, don't punish me. I I know I'm testing you. And he knew he was doing wrong by doing this, but he needed these these confirmations, multiple confirmations from the Lord. And that's not right. When the Lord says, this would be like if the Lord said, Brian, I need you to go. You're called to be this pastor. You're called to go to this church. Like, Lord, I need about three more confirmations to make sure that this is what you want me to do. That's exactly right. And, and, and I, I was reading this just to make sure I got this right. Um, in Judges 6, mm. like Gideon, G- God shows up to Gideon. And he says, hey, you're going to go deliver yeah. people from the Midianites. Mm. And he says, um, um, Gideon says to him, if now I have favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it is you who speak with me. Right. That's well before the whole fleece thing. Right. So like there was an initial sign a very at the very beginning where God very, very clearly demonstrated that right. he was God. Mm-hmm. And Gideon's like, oh, cool. And then he does some stuff. And then he goes and says, uh, just double checking, God, here's right. this fleece deal. Can you, you know, and I'm like, I don't want to be like that. Yeah. You know, nope. Um, nope. that's so good, man. That's something I'm learning. <laughs> well, that leads me to my next point, you know, um, uh, I think that one of the things the Lord has been teaching me is to take God's word seriously. And in that there's kind of a recommitment to spiritual disciplines. Um, and, you know, as, as we think about God's word, we either have to say, this is God's word. It is God's holy word that he has spoken or it's not. And if it is yeah. God's word, then it means something. It means that God has spoken to us and we need to take it literally when God says, for us to, um, for instance, back to the sin conversation, when God says, uh, you know, resist the devil, flee temptation, mm-hmm. you know, when he <clears throat> says for us to be sober minded, to, to walk in holiness, when he says these things, that's not just a suggestion. Those yeah. are things that we need to do in our life. You know, when, when the Lord, like you mentioned the um, Sermon on the Mount, the Sermon on the Mount is the ethic of the kingdom. You know what I mean? Right. Where, where he says a saved person will strive for holiness in this way. So if God says, do not be anxious, don't worry about what you will eat right. and he don't yeah. worry. Then the Christian should say, okay, God's word says, don't worry. I'm not yeah. going to worry. I'm going to exercise Man. faith. And I Preach. understand how hard that is. I understand what I'm saying <laughs> is difficult. Okay. Yeah. And I myself am, pre- I'm preaching to myself, but if we truly believe, say, this is God's word, then we must obey it. We must believe it. Yeah. So I don't yeah, know. Man, I mean, do you, do you see people that struggle with this? I mean, they'll come to me and say, I've got this problem. <clears throat> I've got this problem. And I will tell them what it says from God's word. And they'll say, yeah, but do you, do you hear this? Yes. Yes. And you know, I'll be honest, like I get it. I obviously I get it. Cause I mean, there's been times in my life where, the word of God has confronted me. I mean, it does it, it you know, cause it's, it's God and his authority yeah. that confronts you and your attempt for authority in your own life to live how you want to live. Mm-hmm. And um, so I get that, but, but for me, ultimately when I submit to that authority, mm-hmm. it becomes so freeing because I don't have to guess anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't have to figure it out. I don't have to like, you know, work for, um, understanding and for righteousness i i can just like hold on to this like yeah. oh okay um but it takes it takes the, the an act of the will to surrender yourself to that but once you've done that man like you are free and mm-hmm. um and that's the thing that i hope people will hear with what you're saying is like i take god's word seriously um it's kind of like it's it's i talk about it like um googling you know it's like mm-hmm. you're in a conversation and you're arguing about the meaning of a word or something. Yeah. And so eventually what do you do? You Google it. And, uh, and so I say for me, like if I'm trying to figure out reality and what's true and what's right, what do I do? I Bible it. Um, yeah, that's and, good. Uh, mm-hmm. you need well, to I mean, ultimately, it. ultimately people always want to know, well, what, 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 what should I do? What should I think? How should I, I, I live? And it's like, God's word is there for yeah. that exact reason. And if I confront yeah. 
God's word and it says something contrary to what I think, I need to change what I think. I just change. I need to change and say, okay, this is what God's word says. And it's almost this simplistic sort of view, but, but in a sense, does it need to be any more complicated than that? I don't think so. I think the only thing that makes it complicated is our, our desire to get what we want. I mean, it's like a child. This is what it is. It always is for me. So I'm talking about my own personal experience Mm -hmm. and what I know is true for everyone else. Mm -hmm. We are like children when your parent says no, and the child says, Oh, so maybe like tomorrow. Right. And you're like, no, the answer was no. The answer was no. And you have to eventually be like, the answer's no. Stop asking. No, you know. If you don't um, stop asking, you're going to be punished. (laughs) Yes. Because the only thing that's complicating the matter is my desire, my sinful desire to do what I want to do instead of what God wants me to do. And and I just have to let go of that. And that's the hard part. But that's where Jesus comes in and he sanctifies our our hearts. Yeah, that's good. Well, this is all. This has all been reading, leading me to a recommitment to spiritual disciplines, which in in two areas, mainly in prayer, because I haven't, and I think most Christians don't take prayer seriously. But if you look at the example of Jesus, he, he did. I just did yeah. a study on Luke chapter twenty two, and and I actually looked more into the life of Jesus, and he was routinely in prayer, getting away by himself in prayer. You know, teaching his disciples to pray. And in the night before he was arrested to be to go to the cross, he wanted to go pray, and he wanted to be with his father. That is such a powerful testimony to the power of prayer. And I don't think people understand the temptation for Jesus to walk away from the cross was great. If yeah. you read the text, especially Luke chapter 22, it's in other places too, but Satan was ever-present in that because it says earlier on that Satan— had asked for Peter to be given over. So it's I'm, I'm imagining like a Job situation yeah. where Satan goes to the Lord and says, hey, you say Peter is so great, I'm going to test him. And the yeah. Lord is giving permission for Peter to be tested. And so Jesus says, pray that you will not enter into temptation. And what does he say to his disciples? Not once, but twice. He says, pray that you will not enter into temptation. As he's praying, they wow. fall asleep. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if prayer is this thing where it's like our only weapon or our only defense in many of these spiritual matters in our life is prayer, why are we not praying more? And, I, and I'm talking yeah. to myself. I'm convicted yeah. over this. I'm convicted over the the, the lack of prayer, the, the, the lack of time spent in prayer in my own life. And I'm like, if I, if, if this is, if Jesus took prayer this seriously, yeah. I need to take it as serious, if not more, because I'm not Jesus. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Seriously. That's, that's exactly the right way to think about it. And, you know, for like, I think for me, the hard thing is, is, is getting out of my mind, this idea that prayer is something that I, that I wait for like a prayer meeting or a Bible study yeah. to do, you know, it's not, it's not just like, okay, I'm going to go to church and and have a prayer meeting, you know, once a week or something like that's good. Yeah. But it's more than that. It's it's like I'm I'm doing this on a regular, ongoing basis. Mm-hmm. This is a regular, routine part of my life, mm-hmm. and that's I think where I know I struggle, and I think many many Christians struggle yeah. to find it as as valuable. This, and I'm and this I, time with and Lord. I say this as someone who's not not good at this yet. I'm still Same. striving. I'm still striving to be good at this, but I want to be a uh, quote prayer warrior. I want to be someone who is, yeah. who turns to prayer and, and seeks prayer as um, one of the, 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 the weapons, the main weapon that I use mm-hmm. in spiritual warfare and spiritual faith. Yeah. So, you know, the That's last really thing cool. I'll, I'll mention about spiritual disciplines that the Lord has really been convicting me of is scripture memorization. And so I just <laughs> started the last couple of weeks. So, so I've been meeting with a, with a guy and I've been doing discipleship because he wanted to be discipled, but then also like, you know, has, as it happens so many times, you yourself are being challenged and and growing. And so my own relationship, I told him, I said, I said, I'm so thankful that you came to me because my own relationship has been challenged and growing. And one of the areas we've been going through the Robbie Gallaty books. And I really feel like if you're wanting to be discipled, you could read them on your own. And, And the idea is you disciple other people, but um, there's a series of three books by Robbie Gallaty, 
um, I think it's called Growing Up, Firmly Planted, and Bearing Fruit are the three books. Yeah. I'll put them in the show notes. But we been, we went through Growing Up. We're starting in uh, Firmly Planted. And one of the big things in Growing Up is spirit, is Scripture memorization. So I was like, hey, I'll, I need to be more, I need to take God's Word serious. I need to be more prayerful. I need to deal with with sin seriously and resist temptation. Scripture memory helps me with all three of those things because I can yeah. I can study <laughs> I can study God's word, I can pray through it as I'm memorizing it, and I can recall scripture, you know, in the midst of temptation that helps keep yeah. me from sin. And so I've memorized two sections of scripture. I'm working on my third one. Uh, and basically to to be honest, Brian, this is what I do when I go to the gym, I try to get grab, I use this, this app called verse locker. I'm going to, I'm going to look that up. There's, there's several of these apps out there. I I'm using verse locker and, um, I go to the gym and I will get on the treadmill for 10 minutes or so, however long. And I will memorize a couple of verses out of the scripture and then I'll, I'll be able to work on it the rest of the day when I have a few minutes, few down minutes. So I memorized Psalm one. That was my first scripture. And then I memorized Psalm 119 versus not, not the whole Psalm 119. Yeah, by the way. You'd, 119. Be, you'd be really impressed if I did that. No, <laughs> so, I yeah, just I like, did. Wow. I just did uh nine through 16 one. I did one of the sections from Psalm 119 and now I'm working on the Beatitudes um, Man. in Matthew chapter five. So I don't say this because I, I listen, I do not, I'm not trying to brag at all because I have been really bad at this in the past, and I know I've used the excuse of like, oh, I'm just not good at memorization. I think that's just literally because I haven't tried or I haven't yeah. like put an effort into it like I've like I've needed to. And so those are some of the things the Lord, it's, it's a lot of personal things the Lord has kind of helped me with, and they all kind of layer and kind of build on one another and help one another in that in that way. Well, you know, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm convicted, you know, I've been convicted of that. We're, we're going through... Uh, Dr. Whitney's personal spiritual disciplines on our Sunday night discipleship classes. And that was one of the ones that got me was, uh, you know, uh, scripture memory. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all of them are just like, you know, like, oh, I need, you know, like right. I need to do. Um, and I want to, I want to do these things better because I know it's so good for me. Um, and uh, man, that's so good. But like, especially as a believer, as somebody who loves the Lord, we love his word. Mm-hmm. We want to do that. But, you know, as a pastor too, like, I mean, like I'm supposed to know the word. Yeah. Like I want to know the word and I'm supposed to know the word. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna use that tool. To me, that's a really sometimes it's so simple as like I just I really need a helpful tool and I'm gonna, you know, I need to use it. Right. But uh, I'm gonna check this uh verse locker thing out and uh and well, start using it. And, and people that's need good. to understand it's like it's like um even if you memorize like one verse a week, it's like that's one more verse than you memorized last last week. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not or small. It, yeah, it's like it doesn't. Ha- you're not having to memorize giant chunks of scripture. Just, just get God's word in your life, and and I tell you, it makes it. It's such a huge difference in the way you think, the way you uh, kind of live your life, the outlook of your life. I mean, it. You know, you still have struggles, you still have temptations, but man, you're equipped with the word of God, and it is. Yes. it's amazing. So that's awesome. What else you got? Any, you got another thing here? Yeah, I got uh, at least one more, two more, maybe. Um, so, okay, so this was helpful again. You know, another thing about how to keep keep doing this thing that's like so new, so like, oh my goodness, what am I doing? I had I had one guy who used to be the uh, the director of the association uh, down here. He asked me, he was like, so uh, have you started asking yourself what in the world did I get myself into? Uh, you know, and uh, and I was like, you know. Uh, Yes, not because of the church, not because of anything bad, but just because, like, how did other people do this sort of thing? How do people uh, go and take on, you know, these these tasks that God asked them to do? And I just think about people from history and some of the things that they've done that are way harder. Right. You know, like uh, like I'm reading Ezekiel right now, and um, you know, that's a great example of somebody having to do a hard ministry. I don't have that deal. I've right. got the, my problem. Okay. Let me tell, tell this is funny. One of my problems is uh, I had a, a, one of my, there's a guy in our church who he's a prayer warrior. He's like such an encouragement to my heart. He comes up to me and he's like, pastor Brian. And uh, he's like, can I ask you something about your sermons? And I said, yes, sir. 
And he's like, can you, can you give me more time for amens? <laughs> and I said, you're asking me a pastor to give you more time to say amen while I'm preaching. Like, absolutely. I can do that. So I don't have the problem that Ezekiel had where mm -hmm. people didn't want to hear what you had right, to say. Right. Um, but how did they do it? And you know, uh, the, the reality is we look at these people from history. We look at like Spurgeon. Yeah. We look at like a Jim and Elizabeth Elliot. We look at people from scripture and we think that they, that like, obviously they were going to do whatever they did to overcome right. adversity mm -hmm. and, and stay faithful, obviously. But in their moment and time, it wasn't obvious. It was just as real and as hard as yeah. it is for us today. And it took patience and trust and endurance for them too. And so like, it's the simple, normal basics of Christianity. And I've seen other people in history live it out. It was not easy for them. Yeah. It wasn't easier mm -hmm. for them than it is for me, but they trusted the Lord anyway. They yeah. were patient in the Lord. They trusted and they endured. And so if they, if they did it, if God helped them do it, then I know he'll help me do it. Yeah. And so that is just another reminder of like, Hey, people have gone before us and done these exact same things they've done way harder things mm -hmm. so i need to just chill out right and not worry and be patient yeah um and so i'm i'm you know that's something that i'm really focusing on is just trying to trying to remember that like hey this is not any different from anyone else in history and i know that god uh, can do amazing things through totally normal people. Yeah. Um, well, you know, so, I, I, we just uh, have been gone through, we finished going through acts, the book of acts in, in church. Yes, and we've, in the we, church. we've been going through that with our life group off of based off the sermons. And one of the things I wanted to impress to my life group was guys, we look at Paul as, as a, like a, St. Paul, you know, the apostle Paul, Yes. but like he was normal everyday guy. He was not, he's not divine. He, would have faced the same fears, the same temptations, the, the same everything that we face. Yeah. And you look at him, there, any one of us, if committed to the Lord, dedicated to the Lord, relying, trusting on the Lord, having the faith of the Lord can, can do similar things. I mean, you just, you just attested to that fact about missionaries and martyrs and reformers and people like yeah. that. They were normal people. Stuff happened to them. They were probably frustrated. One of the stories that, I, I, uh, resonate with so much is, um, um, oh gosh, I'm forgetting his name right now. He was the guy who translated the Bible into English, uh, Tyndale. One oh, of the, yeah, one yeah. of the stories about Tyndale was he was fleeing and some of his work, a, a large portion of his work mm. was dumped into the river and yeah. it wasn't like he had a backup copy. There was no cloud or no, nothing back then. <laughs> And it, it reminded me of like the time when I'm writing a paper for school back in the day and something happens with your computer glitches and, you know, this is before the cloud and before backups yeah. and stuff. And you're like, ah, and you got to, you know, I'm sure Why God? I know I'm sure Tyndale was had those moments where when this happened to him, he, he wasn't like, oh, well, this is a great opportunity for me to just love the Lord and redo this work. <laughs> Like, I'm sure that he was like, I don't know for sure, but I mean, he probably was really ticked and he probably was like, okay, yeah. God, I don't know how I'm going to do this again because he literally did all of that work by hand. But yeah. you know what? Praise God. He started over and he redid the work and we still have that work. And it was, it was foundational work in translating the Bible. And so it just reminds me that all of these people were real. They all had their struggles. They all had their things that they went through. And so nothing, nothing that I'm going through is like unique, yeah. you know, I have to trust yeah, the Lord okay. the same, the same way they did. That's exactly right. Like everything's okay. So like, just keep going, you know, it's all good. Like, yeah, yeah it's not easy, but Hey, it's all good. Like yeah. other people did way harder things. Mm -hmm. And so like, keep going That's good. Um, and, and cry out to the Lord when it is hard, but, but just don't stop. Um, so that's, I do have one more, but I'll wait. Is there, well, the last, the last thing, you? yeah, the last thing I'll say is this kind of, this kind of goes in with some of the things the Lord has been teaching me and showing me. He's revealed a lot of like personal things to my life. One of the things that the impact of media, both social media and, um, uh, just media in general, you know, and how, how keyed yeah. in to that I was. So I've attempted to remove a lot of social media and video apps and things like that from my phone so I can be more present and not just be in that in that zone 
you know, when I'm home or when I'm yeah. taking a break or even like you find yourself like, oh, I got two seconds yeah. uh, and I'm going to pull up my phone and see what's going on on YouTube or Facebook or whatever. And so I'm trying to lessen that, you know, one of the things, and, and this all kind of ties together because one of the things I have been watching, which is a really great show, is called Peyton's Places and it's based on the history of the NFL and it's on ESPN oh. Plus. And I've been thinking about what does it take for me to excel in my faith? And this is a lot of what it takes to excel on the football field. He's met with all of the, like some of the great, you know, R- Roger Stallback. And I mean, he was meeting with, uh, you know, Brett Favre and, and Tom Brady, you know, people we know today. And then, and then, and then people from uh, yesteryear, he met with a guy, of course, Johnny Unitas is dead, but he met from, he met with one of Johnny Unitas' wide receivers who's like in his eighties or nineties or something like that. Wow. And it's like, these guys did all of these amazing things on the football field. And then what did it take to be the champion? And I love this quote. This quote came up from Chuck Knoll. It says, champions are champions, not because they do anything extraordinary, but because they do the ordinary things better than anyone else. Yeah, I mean. And I thought about this, and I thought Paul, the apostle, William Tyndale, Martin Luther, uh, the martyrs, Stephen, Um, you know, all the people throughout history, they weren't extraordinary because they were just like extraordinary people. They did the ordinary things better than anyone else. And when I say the ordinary things, I'm talking about faith. I'm talking about trusting in the Lord. And so if I will look at my life and say, you know what? I don't have to be a super Christian. I don't have to be a, a, a super pastor. All I have to be is a dedicated saint and a dedicated person to the Lord, trusting in him. And if I do the ordinary things, if I will continue to to press into spiritual disciplines, if I'll continue to press into my faith, continue to press into these sort of these things, lessen the impact of the, the, the world in my life, if I will do those things, God will 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 use me in ways that I can't even imagine. Yeah. And so that's kind of like the the button on all of these things that God has been teaching me is to try to really just focus on what I can do, what I can control, the ordinary things of life, and God will take care of the rest. I think that that's, it's so cool that I love every time we do our, our podcast or, or when, you know, when we were doing it all the time together. And I love this, how, how the Lord, he, he, he's in control of everything. Cause like what you just said is exactly what my last kind of point was really going to be mm, about good um this idea that co- so like i'm here and and um you know always it's a totally like reasonable question like if you're not asked this question then it's kind of weird like what's your vision for our church mm. like what do you what what do you think our vision is mm. and for me like the thing is like what what is my vision for leading a healthy church uh it, it really comes back to what you said, it, doing, doing the ordinary things better, mm-hmm. maybe not than anyone else, you know, we're not, right, right. Here, but, mm-hmm. like, but that's the point, right? It's doing the ordinary things of the Christian life better and, and just keep getting better at those things mm-hmm. and never, never being like, ah, it's good enough. You know, the way we're glorifying God over here is good enough. Right. Um, and so like, what are those ordinary things? And really just, I'm having to, recapture Mm -hmm. uh for myself even a uh vision and a zeal for the ordinary ministries that god has given to us and so for instance i'm talking about like equipping people through relational discipleship Mm -hmm. you know making that an intentional reality focusing on getting with guys kind of like what you're doing with with that other guy you know like just getting together and and talking through scripture or a book and helping each other grow, like making that my focus in the church rather than, you know, bells and whistles, right. Focusing on discipleship and evangelism Mm -hmm. and really every aspect of Christianity as a lifestyle instead of an event, you know, like the way I do discipleship and evangelism, the way I, I reach out to my community isn't about just throwing, you know, having these big bells and whistle type, you know, things, right. It's about everyone in the church living this lifestyle, doing the ordinary things, all of us doing all these ordinary Christian things in our lives better than we did before. 
um, preaching expository sermons. I need to preach the word of God and I need to get better at yeah. um, digging into what the word is saying and being able to explain it in uh, in ways that people understand and can walk away with knowing like, what, what am I supposed to do with that? And I, you know, I got to grow in that. I've got to do that better. And then just, we already talked about this developing that culture of obedience to scripture instead of dedication to like a status quo. Yeah. Those are the ordinary things. Mm -hmm. And that's what it looks. That's my vision for every church I've ever been in. That's, that's always going to be my vision for leading a healthy church. We're going to focus on these things because those are the things that God's called us to do. And all we need to do is just do them better. Yeah. Um, and so I love that there's wisdom, you know, that you just found, you know, you're talking about this, this wisdom that you heard uh, on this TV show that, man, when you, you see that in scripture, when you apply that to our Christian life, it just, it just plays out, man. Yeah. So that's good. That's really good. Yeah. yeah. I, and that is, it is interesting how the Lord will just teach us things. If we will be open to hearing from him and, you know, obviously it's going to happen in the word, but occasionally, you know, I mean, I try to learn from every um, person, every uh, interaction, everything that I can, even in the world, things I can, I can learn from. And so yes. that's good. Well, Man, it has uh, been a great, awesome joy to be talking to you today. I wish we were sitting across from each other at the table like I know, we have in the too. past. And uh, I miss you so, so much. I want to have you on uh, in the future as well as, as we go through you know, into the future. And, uh, I don't know, is there any kind of final thing that you want to mention before you, before we sign off? Man, um, just that, yeah, I, I, again, you know, um, what my involvement, you know, I, I would love to be, you know, um, on the podcast as much as uh you're able to have me sure. as much as i'm able to yeah, do it you yeah. know we're still we're still really just kind of figuring that out and i i don't know i might just kind of come on every every sure. you know once in a while as mm -hmm. you have room you know kind of um you know i maybe i could be a good filler i don't know <laughs> but um but but at the end of the day my real point is like i'm i'm thankful for uh the the way that god used mm -hmm. our friendship yeah. and this podcast and i've heard testimonies of people who have listened to this podcast and it's really helped them and man that you know sometimes you just kind of you're just talking about stuff and you're like man lord please use this right and uh, and i really believe god has and mm -hmm. i think that you you need to keep it going i'm really glad that um you and pastor allen have done a, a series and I'm, I'm praying that the lord will lead you um, and, uh, and see who knows where, where things will go and, and what we'll be able to do. But, um, but yeah, it's good. And, uh, I would just say to those who, um, who I, you know, if, if any Oak Hill listeners are listening, you know, Hey, you keep praying for us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I'm hoping to get some second Baptist church, uh, listeners. Uh, I think there already are some. And, uh, and so I hope that they know and are, and are encouraged like, Hey, you know, the Lord is doing good things and, uh, and I'm excited for what the, what the Lord's doing both here at second Baptist and at Oak Hill. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we're, uh, we're friends for life. Yeah. We're families oh, for yeah. life. Oh, we yeah. are a part of our second family, God's family. And, uh, <laughs> and that's never going to change. That's right. So, that's right. So yeah, we'll, man, we'll I love be... you. I love, uh, being able to talk and, do this and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll catch up again. Soon, we'll be sure. praying for you and you continue to pray for us. We're still in a youth pastor search cause you left us in a big void. So no, <laughs> pastor Allen did tell me, he said, he called me. He was like, I just want you to know, uh, I don't hate your guts. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, I said, wow, that's a, that, that was a lot faster than I thought. <laughs> yeah. He, j he finally just got over Jared. So yeah, that's uh you know, <laughs> That's a lot faster getting over you. So he's growing. He's growing. <laughs> you know, praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord. No, no just keep praying. Just keep praying for us. And, uh, you know, God will bring us the person that we need. I, I know we we trust him and in his timing. Yeah. But I will say the uh, the the mark that you left on the student ministry is, is still felt. And the students mm -hmm. love you. And they have, um, you know, they I, I just saw the way that they grew the way that they yeah. were challenged in their faith. Uh, and it's just, it's really cool to see that kind of legacy continue on. Mm -hmm. And I think you have left a lasting mark on them that, um, 
especially the ones that you were with, you know, for the the long, for the full six years, like they will, um, you know, there will definitely be a legacy that will go on from that in faith. So thank you so much. Well, I'm, I, I love them and miss them. And if any of them listen to this, they, they just need to know that, you know, um, the Lord is in charge of our lives. We have to do what he says. Um, and, uh, but, but that doesn't change my love for people that Mm -hmm. I can't be around all the time. Right. And, uh, and so, um, so yeah, yeah. You know, the Lord is good and, uh, he calls us to hard things, but when God takes us somewhere new, he has good things for us to do. Oh man, that's good. That's a good, that's a good way to end it. We need to do those things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, well, good, man. Cool. Thank you for being on today and we got to do, we got to sign off together. Hold on. I forgot what I say. Hold on. What do we say? Hold on. Hold on. Uh, uh, we'll see you yes, next time. Okay, I'm ready. Yep. yep ready. And see you next see time. See you next time. Good job. <laughs> hey, say something. Testing. One, two, three. Yeah. Test, test, Yeah. Test. You're only coming through my headphones. So that's good. Okay. So it's going through my computer. Oh, that, that you just fart. No, okay. I was wondering about that. No, this is terrible. <laughs> sure. I literally had that. It's the thought. chair, sure. It's the chair. I promise it's the chair. Because I'll be sitting here, honestly, I'll be sitting in here with my headphones on sometimes. Like, study, and then I'll just be rocking and it's like, and I like hear it <laughs> over my headphones. I'm like, come on. I'll try not to move. Oh my gosh. You're like, well, I've been eating a lot of. Mexican food down in Texas. It's got me, got me tore up. So much Mexican food. Oh my goodness.